Albion Online is a sandbox MMORPG in which you get to create your own story. Many of us have probably heard this line once or twice in our time, and considering that almost all ads that involve Albion Online usually start with this bit, it wouldn't be surprising if we had. Now, if you're completely new to this game, I'm going to have to say it up front. They're actually pretty right. Oftentimes, you get put into an MMORPG world that really couldn't care less about you, and even though you may think that ads could seem a little misleading, Albion does a pretty good job of really implementing a player-run economy. From items gathered and crafted to monsters killed and drops bought by NPCs and recycled to the players, this game really does have it all as far as recycling content goes. Today we're going to be covering one of the largest parts of the game and hands down one of my favorite systems that an RPG has made to date regarding the topic of crafting. Crafting items in MMORPGs can be tedious at best and pointless at worst. I may not really care so much for getting 99 crafting, but the fact of the matter is I'm going to have to craft and buy X thousand battle staves and air orbs if I want to get 99 crafting in RuneScape. It's not very creative design, and even if it was a little rewarding, it's just kind of boring. Albion Online's crafting system is a little more unique. It isn't very complex, but when it's combined with the mechanics of this game, it's not just something that's interesting and profitable, but also pretty much a requirement. If you're new to the game and you don't know a lot of the game's mechanics, one of the things that I will say, even though this video is not technically about it, is that whenever a player dies in a PvP scenario, their armor has a chance of breaking. And as their items break, they have to be replaced somehow. And if you watched my 100 solo dungeon video that basically had loot from 100 solo dungeons, you can see that the amount of items that are brought into the game is pretty substantial, especially for just one player, but you also got to keep in mind how broad the spectrum is for the drops that they give. And so it'd be very difficult to find a very specific item in there that you could actually use for your PvP scenario. And since this game likes to promote individuality and creativity, there still ends up being some builds that are better than others for certain situations. And so trying to find those very specific pieces of gear in all the different mob drops can be pretty difficult. And so crafting is probably one of the places that it's easiest to get what you're looking for. And that's where the video will start. This crafting guide consists of eight full sections. I know it's a lot, but we'll get through it. Section one, gathering materials. There isn't really much to say here, but if I were to explain it all, it would defeat the purpose of this video as I want to keep it kind of brief with my long intro sequence already taking up a lot of the video. I would like to just kind of get past it and just show you guys that I gathered some materials that we're going to be using for our examples today. Section 2, Material Processing. I've covered focused cost efficiency in a separate video so I won't be talking about it here but we do have to take these raw materials and turn them into something that we can actually work with. One thing that you will have to remember is that with the way the Albion's refining system works, you have to make tier 2 bars, then combine the tier 2 bars with tier 3 ore to make tier 3 bars. And then to make tier 4 bars, you have to have tier 4 ore and tier 3 bars. And then it just goes up the ladder. It's pretty useful that the ladder requires even the low tier materials because it basically ensures that even the low tier players of gathering can still actually have a viable reason to gather tier 2 materials and sell them on the market. They aren't exactly valuable, but they still have a value nonetheless and so it will still help players stimulate an income at the very beginning of the game. Now, people can choose to sell the materials that they gather, or they can use them to craft. For our sake, we're actually going to be using the materials that we gathered, but it is definitely an option to buy them from the store, or sell them to the store. But that's not really what this video is about. Section 3. Crafting. Crafting has a few aspects to it that make it unique to this game, and I'll mention them now just to put them all on the table. Quality quantity, and focused cost efficiency. The idea of quantity and focused cost efficiency I covered in a different video, but basically the long short of it is if you have a higher focused cost efficiency and you craft with focus, you will in general craft more stuff. But onto the actual good stuff, the quality. Whenever you are crafting an item, based on your skill level, you are going to assign the item a quality and it'll increase the item's item power. If you don't know what item power is, it basically just says how strong that item is. 
for example, a tier 4 item may have, say, 800 item power, and a tier 5 item would have 900 item power, or whatever it is. And if you were to increase the quality of the item that you crafted, you will actually increase the power of the item. So, for example, a tier 4 masterpiece is the equivalent to a tier 5 regular normal quality item because the item power increase for the different qualities are normal gives 0, good gives 10, outstanding gives 20, excellent gives 50, and masterpiece being 100. Obviously masterpiece is what you want to go for, but one thing that you have to understand is as you level up your skill into crafting, your overall average quality increases. It doesn't mean that you're always going to be crafting something super high tier, that doesn't mean you'll stop crafting low tier stuff, but in general you will craft higher tier items. For example, when I craft my Guardian Boots, I'm max spec in, I generally don't get normal tier items. It's still possible, but it's rather rare. I usually get at least good and outstanding, and I get more masterpieces than probably the average player. As you level up your skill in crafting for a specific item, your overall average quality of the item will be higher. Having a higher quality will always be good because it makes a more item valuable. This is because it has a set power maximum, if you will. If we look at a tier 4 item with no quality or enchantment bonuses, it has a set item power. And if you increase that item power with the quality, you increase its power and therefore its stats. Increasing a power maximum is very useful because it means that players who are locked to a tier 4 specific item can actually match higher tier players even though they don't have the same access to the gear. Usually at a cheaper cost, but sometimes it really does vary. But using higher quality and higher enchanced gear will give you a higher tier gear equivalent. Section 4. Enchanting and item power. Albion is full of magic or something like that, and the resources spawn in the world will sometimes glow different colors. Green for enchantment 1, blue for 2, purple for 3. When an item is made from these resources, they grants it an item power increase. An item power enchanted with tier 3 will have basically a point three added to its name. So if someone says they're selling a 4.3 item, that means they're selling a tier 4 item with an enhanced enchantment of tier 3. Section 5. Crafting in the Royal Cities. Crafting in the Royal Cities generally has an increase to return rate with specific items. So whenever you're crafting any type of item and you're doing it in a Royal City, you will always get at least 15% of your materials back if you're not using focus. Every city has different items that they are specialized in, and if you craft these types of items in the cities, you will be increased to 25%. And if you refine the type of material that they're looking for, you can actually increase that number to 35% opposed to 15%. So I suppose if I wanted to truly get 400 spec in plate boot crafting, I would take all of my ores that I mined, go take them to Thetford, where I would get a higher resource return rate, smelt them there, and then return to Martlock with my stuff to craft the plate boots. So I could get, theoretically, the most fame out of my materials. You can check over this if you need it, but I'm going to go ahead and move on. But this is something that you might want to consider whenever you're crafting stuff. In the long term, it'll definitely help you, even if it might cost you a bunch of running around. Section 6. Transmuting. Well, you have three options. You can buy the higher tier materials from the store, you can get them from dangerous areas, or you can transmute them using silver. This method isn't exactly the most useful often because the amount of silver it requires to transmute it to a higher tier is usually greater or equal to the amount of price difference between the two tiers. However, sometimes you can find a margin on it. Don't expect it, but it can happen. Maybe for board, look through it. But maybe this would be very useful if you were, say, on an Iron Man which I may use this someday, but anyway. Section 7, Filling Journals. So you can fill up these things called journals, which you give to your laborers that work on your island. You can basically fill these up for other players who will use them on their island to just earn a little extra money on the side to make up for the amount of silver you're probably going to lose doing low-spec crafting, 
they sometimes have a pretty decent margin on them and you can make a good amount of profit and it's just a pure addition to what you're already doing and it can sometimes help pick up the slack to maybe make you break even instead of just losing a ton of money and all it really takes is just an extra little bit of input cash which is pretty useful consider it if you can if you have the extra money just look it up on the albion online wiki to see what types of journals there are and see what you can do to fill them up and if there's a good profit margin on them and maybe you'll make some money in the long run doing different things not just crafting section eight studying at the cost of your gear and the benefit of the economy by removing items the game will give you massive amounts of fame rather quickly if you craft a tier 4 item hypothetically for say 400 fame you can study it destroying the item completely and gaining an extra 800 fame making the materials effectively worth 300 percent of their original value this actually works with buying cheap tier 4 gear from the market as an additional way of getting fame which is pretty useful because it works as an item sink and also helps keep the balance in the economy by throwing away items but also giving fame to new players or players that don't already have the spec maxed out so i suggest that if you can maybe buy some stupid cheap gear and if you don't need the money you can even sink a ton of money into leveling up your spec through this so it might be something that could be useful for the long-term effects but that's something you'll just have to decide for yourself based on what you're doing how much silver you make and the type of person you are I know I covered a lot in this video, but one thing that you need to remember is that crafting won't make you a lot of money at the start, especially if you don't have premium. Most of the time, I end up breaking even without using focus, and that's usually if I'm lucky and I have a good journal margin. I would say that it wouldn't be surprising to spend more money than you'll make for at least a while, and especially because the player base is so massive right now, crafting is a little saturated, but that still leaves room for higher spec crafters to make money because of course having higher quality items will in turn generate more profit but if you have any questions leave them in the comments and if you got this far into the video consider subscribing it really does make me happy i love reading your guys's comments i respond to them usually as quickly as i can i would love to hit a thousand subscribers one day so i would really appreciate it if you guys could give the video a like and maybe subscribe until next time have a good day guys